mind is so powerful. And I didn't realize it. I went through three hell weeks, ranger school, Delta Force selection, all this stuff. This incident I'm going to explain to you right now is where I realized we are only at 40% of what we are capable of. Here I am, right idea to do this race called Badwater 135. I Googled the 10 hardest races in the world. What came up? Crazy race in Death Valley. Summertime, 135 miles. I knew nothing about ultra running. I thought you would like, you know, camp out, run 20 miles. Then one day, then run 20 miles again until you got 135 miles. I had no idea what I was doing. Called the race director up, he's like, hey, have you run 100 miles? I was like, what, in a week or what? What are you talking about? He's like, no, in 24 hours or less. I said, no. He goes, you got to qualify to get in this race. You have to run 100 miles in 24 hours or less. He was trying to call my bluff. I call him up on a Wednesday. He goes, hey, there's a race in San Diego on Saturday where it's a 24-hour race where you run around you know, a track, a one-mile track for 24 hours. And if you get 100 miles, I will consider you in my race. It really helps to be smart, people. And I was not smart in this situation. I said, oh, I did the math. It's about a 14-something mini mile. I can do that. Anyway, I show up on Saturday with the blue lawn chair, Rich Crackers, Mile Plex, and my ex-wife. And every mile I'm going to see her, I'm going to grab some Ritz crackers and some Mileplex. I know what the hell I'm doing. But it's bliss. That whole ignorance is bliss thing. So I get to 70 miles pretty damn fast. I get to 70 miles in like 12, 13 hours. What do you think happens to your body when you haven't trained for that kind of mileage? A lot of bad things. But I thought I was in good shape. It was amazing. I hadn't gone to the bathroom at all. I sit down, big mistake. I sit down in this blue lawn chair. I sit down, looking at my ex-wife. I'm seeing like three or four of her. And I'm like, oh, oh this is not good. So I'm trying to play it off because I know where I'm about to go. So I'm sitting there, and when you haven't gone to the bathroom, you're dehydrated, your nutrition's all jacked up. You sit down, you gotta go to the bathroom now. So I'm sitting there, literally, pooping up my back and peeing blood down my leg. She's a nurse, so she's concerned. And I'm telling you right now, there's one thing you never wanna hear as a black person. She said, you're starting to turn white. So I'm sitting there and I'm all jacked up. And I'm like, okay, how in the world am I gonna, I got 30 miles to go. I should quit, but I didn't. What I started doing through this whole process was I started to study myself in the dark times. So instead of just quitting real fast, I said, no, I'm going to quit, but not right now. So I sat back for a second and I said, let me get some water. Let me hydrate. Let me clean myself up a little. Let me get some nutrition. I wasn't dizzy. So, okay. My feet are all messed up. Let me see if I can walk. I'm going to walk one mile and then I'll go home. That'd be a great accomplishment for me, 71 miles. So I took this massive thing and I started breaking it down into small chunks. And as I started breaking it down into small chunks, I started realizing maybe I'll walk one more mile. But at the pace I was walking, I wasn't going to make the time. So this is when I realized the whole 40% rule. Those of you who worry, you know, red can't hurt me, you understand it. Basically, the 40% rule is when we have a governor on our brains like a governor on a car. A car may say 130, but if you put a governor on a car, it can only go 101. We do the same thing to our brains. I was born with limited horizons, born on the other side of the tracks. I didn't think I could be anybody. So my governor was myself. 
So once you take that governor off, you have limitless horizons. So this guy just passed me. He said, Goggins, just be average today. Some of you just don't understand. Some of you have been average for so damn long, you don't know what it is to do hard work. But there's a lot of you out there who want to be much more than average, but just don't know how to do it every single day, the grind. So check it out. This is a mindset. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But there's a bunch of out there who wants what you have, who wants the position you are, who wants the job you have, who wants the wife that you have, or the husband. There's someone out there hungry and wants everything you can have. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But if it is, it's going to be your ass. So make that a motivation for you. Stay hard. I want to be that guy. I want to be a guy that's capable of doing exactly what I'm doing today. You have to, if you weren't born that guy, that mentally strong guy, he can be made. Woman, man, whatever the, whatever the hell you are. It can be made. But in making that person, you have to turn, be able to turn down book deals. You have to be who you are every day of your life and never care about anybody who gets in your way that said you're not doing something the proper way. I was always afraid of people not wanting to, like, when you get beat as bad as I did, I lied all the time. I wanted to be accepted and loved and that I created about 50 people. Whatever you like, I like. Just, if you would be my friend, just be my friend. And that's where we get lost in life. So today, I decided to try to PR my long run. So the first half of the run, I'm feeling great. My mind is clear, nothing going on. Think about nothing but my, just my running pace, what I'm doing, my breathing, everything like that. Get to mile 15, I turn around, and the demons start to creep in. That inevitable wall is creeping up on me. When you push so hard, something's about to give. And I started to give. My mind started to break down. I started feeling my legs starting to hurt. I started feeling dehydrated. I started feeling sorry for myself. I started looking around. Why don't you go ahead and just stop? Call your girl, have her pick you up. Get out of your head and stay hard. This guy stopped me at a stoplight. He was like, hey, Goggins, why am I not getting better? I'm a big time goal setter. I run half Ironman. I run half marathon. I go for that new promotion at work. Why am I not getting better? I asked him a question. Do you have fear of not reaching those goals? He said, no. But okay, that's your problem. You're setting goals. You know you can reach. And when you do that, that fear, that insecurity, that doubt, that's where you grow. He's not getting that. You must always set goals that you think you cannot achieve. And then there you get better. Stay hard. Everything I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you can't hurt me. I have this haunting voice in the back of my head. A lot of us have it. At least ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was going to be something that I didn't want to even, even attack. So I was just putting it off. It haunted me. That's what I realized for myself was I wanted that comfort zone that everybody looks for, that pat on the back. They don't want to hear all the bad, but they want to hear everything that they're doing right. And I realized that's what kept me in this world. That's what kept me in this world of not accomplishing anything. What I did was 
I became that big, bad nasty that you don't want to walk into at nighttime. I became the roughest critic in the world on myself. And that's what changed me. The harder it is, the more you start to push back. And the more you push back, and then it's not right for people to talk about. It's not right for, like let's say you are fat. I was fat, so I talk about it. And it was hard as every day to get up. I know what it feels like when you roll your fat ass out of bed and all you want is some damn cinnamon buns and, and chocolate milkshake. I, I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. But I can't want it more than you. And so many people just want it the easy way. It, I'm sorry, man. It's not. So what they start to do is they build this narrative of it's okay. When the narrative should be you need to work harder. You need to discipline your mind better. We need to help people more than just saying it's okay. It's okay that you're not willing to help yourself out. That's not okay. I stopped caring about people that what they thought, being judged, wow, if I say this, if I started right now, are you gonna make fun of me? I stopped caring about that. And that's when my life started really changing for me, slowly but surely or situations that have wronged me. Because once you come to a place where you are really happy with who you are in life, no one f with you anymore. Even though they're f with you. It doesn't f with it you. It doesn't f with you. What do you want in your life? We have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost. We don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves. I'm insecure here. This isn't the real me. I lied to you about that. I wanted your acceptance in life. All those things happen, but the thing about it is that we get judged so quickly by who we are. We don't know, we don't go to, the, to where it happened. Life created this person, me. And I had to realize, man, that's okay, man. It's not my fault. Now I gotta go back and fix it though. So a lot of this isn't your fault, why you do some things you do, why you feel the way you feel. But no one's coming back to save your ass. You have to go back to where they started, wherever that place is for everybody, and have the courage to go back there and start fixing what broke you. I was just an insecure, scared kid. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. So the only way I could turn around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created but I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you gotta flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whoever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not going to find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. How? That's the question. How are you gonna do that? Thick in your skin, become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, on the other side is greatness. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You gotta first see it. You gotta first create this vision in your mind. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I going to get there? But you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you got to be quiet. Shut the fuck up. Go in a room. Stop talking. Search your soul. Search your mind. Search your abilities. And you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you got to go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? Well, the big thing that got me lifting was my self-esteem was real low. So I hid behind that big body. So 
I was 175 pounds before I became that 300 pound guy. And the reason why I became big was to hide my real soft, insecure, fearful of everything self. And being, being a large individual, it scared people away from the real soft David Goggins inside. So I built this humongous exterior to keep away the enemy because my mindset wasn't um, what it is now. When you know these things about yourself and you know that you're hiding from certain things and you know why you became big. I didn't become big for the love of the sport. You know, it wasn't like, you know what? I just want to be some jacked up cat, man. Walk around, eat, you know, 10,000 calories a day. You know, bring around my, you know, eight gallons of water to the gym, <laughs> sit down with my damn smelling salts and just get the after it. I love that part, but it was hiding a lot going on in my in my life, in my personal life. So that, that big guy became my armor, became my shield so people wouldn't pick on me anymore. They'd be scared because I would, you know, just either just beat the f out of them or just eat them, whatever the f first. And the one thing that I really realized was for me to become a tough guy, and that's what I wanted to be. I, I saw myself as a very weak man. And for me to be hard and be tough, I had to start going over to that list, that scary list, and start facing that. Because I knew over there, I was gonna find a whole new person. If I kept on doing the things that made me feel comfortable, I was gonna continue being that same person I always was, the lying, insecure, fearful person living this nice, comfortable life of mine. So I just designed a very uncomfortable world for David Goggins. And in that world, I found a whole new different David Goggins. The biggest problem in this world is other people, not yourself. It's other people in your head. They are puppet mastering you pretty much on your life. We live by the narrative of other people. But what means the most to me is the emails I'm getting. The emails talking about how you're setting different goals, how you're leveling up, how you're finding more, how you're not feeling sorry for yourself, how you're not looking for that handout that the world's not going to give you. And I'll tell you right now, wolves, a lot of wolves travel in packs. But there's some times when even the wolves in that pack don't understand who you are. You must go out there sometimes and travel alone. And even the toughest and hardest people in the world don't have any idea what you're trying to do, and that's okay. You must always look to be uncommon amongst the uncommon. Stay hard. You know, a lot of people have like teammates and like, family pushed my my mom was struggling bro she was struggling so it was like me and my mom and so it was a lot of just me so when you're waking up every morning by yourself getting after it by yourself and it's the hidden work people see one minute you know video of me running this these fighters you know they they see him during the fight or after the fight they don't see much you know what they deal with every day I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Because every day, even though they're from the best in the world, that little mother, seven or eight years old, is still in there saying, oh man, we don't, we don't have something. We're not good enough. We shouldn't be here. So you're always fighting that motherfucker. Even though you beat it, you never truly beat it. And you get up early and all these things you do to start forming yourself. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to. You may have a best friend you're going to. But there's 24 hours in the day when you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're you got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. you got to control it. If not, it's over. You have to be quiet in your mind. Get away from people. We love being around people. We love talking. We love partying. We love all that. It's okay to be alone. It's also okay to be unhappy. I put my phone away. I put shit away. And I go dark. I go dark a lot. And it's because I have to find out. I'm on a journey of life. And we all have a different journey. And I want to be in my pine box. And I believe your spirit lives forever. It has to. It's too powerful. No way in hell that thing just dies when you die. 
I want to be able to look back on my life when I'm all dead and be so fucking proud of myself forever. This is all temporary. My big takeaway of life is if you're constantly taking the easy way out, you're never going to callous your mind. I was a chameleon living in life who could barely get by. So I know that they were taking the normal mindset of people. They weren't talking about the one percenters, the people who want it like there's no tomorrow. Everything I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you can't hurt me. I have this haunting voice in the back of my head. A lot of us have it. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was gonna be something that I didn't wanna even, even attack. So I'll just put it off. It haunted me. That's what I realized for myself was I wanted that comfort zone that everybody looks for, that pat on the back. They don't want to hear all the bad shit. They want to hear everything that they're doing right. And I realized that's what kept me in this world. That's what kept me in this world of not accomplishing anything. What I did was I became that big, bad, nasty that you don't want to walk into at nighttime. I became the roughest critic in the world on myself. And that's what changed me. I literally saw myself in the mirror I saw the truth versus saying, you know, my dad did this to me from, you know, from beating me. My life did this to me. My broken foundation did this to me. I took that and said, you know what? Well, some people may help this happen, but now I have to own this. 99.9% of the I did to get to where I'm at today was alone, alone, out there running in cold and heat suffering in pools, trying to swim, at home in a room by myself, trying to teach myself how to read and write, how to study. You know, no one saw that. There was no video camera, there was no podcast, there was no Who's David Goggin. It was me, I just, just for me trying to get in the military, everybody can do, it's easy. Just trying to learn how to read and write was something that blows Rocky away because I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what I created, but I'm more proud of I created without an audience, without a cheering squad, without someone like, come on, man, you got it, you can do it. You know who you are when there's no motherfucker out there when you're running. And you're at mile 75, 150 mile race, ain't nobody cheering for you. You're broken, you're defeated, it's you and you alone in your head. And I stayed that way for the better part of 30 years, trying to figure it out. A lot of us are going through f***ing hell, maybe not as bad as me, maybe worse than me, but they don't know how to express it because we're supposed to live in a world where we have to talk a certain way. We have to walk a certain way, we have to act a certain way. Nothing gets handled in that f***ing world. You stay stuck in that world, you stay in a world of things will get better because someone said they would and I need to find peace. No, you need to go to a war with yourself, man. At the end of that war, you'll sit back all damaged and bruised and scarred up and fucked up and maybe your so ass muscles so tight that you may lose two inches on your body. Who knows? But then that war, you're gonna sit back on the couch, maybe have a glass of water, you drink a beer, you drink a beer. The war may be 30 years, but when it ends, you will know what the it's all about then. And then you'll find your peace. No one's gonna come back to save me. No one's gonna come back on this couch and say, hey, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna be okay. I had to realize I had to take a stand. I had to make a real stand. And it was painful to look at who I 
like who I was, what the world and myself created. It created a, a very lonely, depressed, insecure man that would do anything just to have a friend. I will guarantee you one thing about me is that we all talk about time. We don't have enough of it. That's bullshit. What you don't do right is you don't prioritize what is important in your life. And for me, me training and the things that I do on a daily basis, that's how I start to build my armor. I started finding self-esteem. Once I found that, that's when doors started opening up. I, started, I stopped caring about people, that what they thought, being judged. Wow, if I say this, if I started right now, are you gonna make fun of me? I stopped caring about that. And that's when my life started really changing for me, slowly but surely. I saw working out as a way for me to build calluses on my mind. I had to callous over the victim's mentality. I always equated training to mental toughening. It always looked brutal. People waking up early and doing all these things. And it, looked, it looked horrible. I was like, wow, man, I got to start doing that. Not to get better, bigger, and stronger, but that is what's going to build me. That looks uncomfortable. So I know how it is to be alone. You have to be able to flip alone on top of his head. I gained a lot of strength from having a sewer mentality. And what a sewer mentality is, is how many people can make it out of the sewer alone with no coach, no trainer, no one to guide you, no one to mentor you, just having a, a, a straight up killer mentality, having a warrior mindset, having a no matter, having a round 14, I'm gonna get up mindset. And you have to learn to flip that loneliness into like total like power. And that's what I was able to do. I was able to like, you know what? If I can come out of this sewer that I'm living in in my mind, if I can overcome all these things by myself, how much strength will I gain from this? That looks brutal. And getting up early, I don't want to do that. So I made this long list of things I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. And you gain a ton of strength from it. So that's how I looked at my life growing up. I stopped looking at all the bad things that life handed me. And I started looking more as a, the ultimate training ground for where I want to go. My, my mental armor starts to get built up by doing these things that are uncomfortable for me. So I still hate running. You guys are getting up at five o'clock in the morning, running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than the average human being. I was like, hold on a second. I have something they don't have. I've never had a lot of people in my life and I keep my circle real small. Um, it's been my mom and you know, it's my fiance right now. And the more people you have in your life, the noisier your life gets, the more distractions you get in your life, the more shit you start to hear. Growth comes from a very quiet place in your mind. And when you can organize it, you have to organize your mind. And when you have so much noise and distraction, there's no organization in that. So I believe in keeping my circle real small and those people know who, they know what they get from me. And I know what I get from them and it keeps me going forward, never stagnant. And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great never ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem. I always equated working out to struggle. And I struggled my whole life, but I ran from it. So I started realizing, man, I gotta start facing the struggle and I gotta be mentally strong for the struggle. So that's why I started kept coming up with like, I, I'm training for life. Mentally, I'm training for life. I'm not training for like, I don't care about winning trophies. I don't care about winning anything. All I wanna do is go to distance. And I found out on my own pretty much is that through this, through, through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, through tons of repetition, the same thing that you don't wanna do. And that's the, that's the key thing. Through repetition of things you don't want to do, you develop mental, like uh, like an armor for your mind. You start to armor your mind, because your mind's like, okay, we suffer, we suffer every day. It's what we do. We do stuff that sucks every day, so then when the suck stuff comes, you're ready for it. And that's how I started coming up. You know, I just started being very uncomfortable, and now I'm, it's like a, just a way of life. And I am happy, because this is my lifestyle. This is what I want to do. But trying to find your best self you become unbalanced. And people always talk about this mythical creature called the balance. You want to be balanced. I, I think balance is a bunch of bullshit.
Yes, I really do. You think for everybody? I really yeah, I think almost for everybody. Everything in my life, so I had to learn this ability that I talked about. My physical gave me the self-discipline and that literally has carried me over to, I can sit down and study. What may take some people an hour to study, I can I have to sit down for maybe 10 hours to learn the same. And that's very frustrating. So I always talk about running and swimming and all the stuff I did in the military and pull-up records and powerlifting and all these mental, all these physical feats. Some of the hardest I do in my life is just learning. But I got that self-discipline from waking up at three and four o'clock in the morning to go out in the cold weather, to, to you know get my run in, to get my lift in, to get my swim in, to do those things, it totally transfers over to my learning. It's that self-discipline you gain from feeling good about yourself by overcoming yourself on the physical aspect of life. But I was like, cause I kind of was preparing myself for the next part of my journey. I don't like to lay in my too long. And I give myself a couple of minutes to say, okay, we got man to f up. We gotta get back, like, what's next? You know, let's go, let's go see, you know, let's, let's go back to college, let's, let's do something, because you're, you're running and your athletic career's done. And this was, this was like literally a, a trained skill for me, was I'm, I'm always preparing for like, not being a bit. Like a lot of people get to a point, like for instance, like, if Jennifer can't do something, like if, you know, if 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 she can't go for a run or whatever, just like because she something's wrong, like some simple shit, it's gonna bother her. I got to a point in my life where I realized this is life, and so I move on past things real quick. So people are like, oh my god, what are you gonna do, David, if you can't run? Like, I'll swim, or I'll go to college, or I'll do something else. This like like this isn't my life. I'm very aware how quick life can take from you and I've always prepared my mind for the next chapter and what happened with me was I started this thing called front loading so when I was young I used to be a little piece of shit. oh I'm not good enough I can't do this I can't do that but the second I got my head out of my ass and I realized man you can achieve a lot of shit if you get off your ass and you start moving and you start motivating yourself Try becoming a self motivator, so I started front loading. And front loading is people, are like, man, you've done so much by 47, because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring me. So my my military resume is fat. You know, I did a lot in the military. I did a lot outside the military. I've 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 made money. I've 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 done almost every race out there, hard race in the world. I've broken pull up records. I've done a lot of. Shit. So when these bad times come. And also, not like, like not only that, like work your ass off so so you can enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you're taking a shot. You know, you you may not live to be old, but what if you do? And you worked your ass off when you were able, and you were able to get up early, able to grind. If you front load it properly, the back half of your life is money, and that's what I did. And this is one thing about life. This is why you always must be ready. Always be ready. Never get ready. People go, oh, hey, what are you training for, David? I ain't training for shit. When something pops up, I'm ready. So when Cam popped the fuck up and Cam calls, hey, man, I'm going to be in uh, Las Vegas. You want to go for a run? Sure do. Sure do, brother. <laughs> sure do. While the run sucked, I was ready. We ain't got some steak. Same day. Saying, oh, we worked it out, dude. Whenever me and him are together, you can guarantee it's going to be two people that love each other, but are waiting for the other motherfucker to break. A hundred percent, dude. It's like this thing in the back of your head. Okay, maybe this will break them. Maybe this will break them. So we haven't broken each other yet, but I'm sure the day will come. In my mind, a lot of times, man, I'm like, it doesn't mean I quit. I, I don't quit. You know, I may not make it the first time, but I'll come back. I got to call an audible. I can get my head back in the game. I got I to gotta figure this shit out. It doesn't mean you leave. It means you study it more. It means you study it more. And, and whenever I fail at something, people always say, man, how do you handle failure, man? I fail a lot, dude. I fail all the time. They go, how do you handle it? What I'm trying to do 
And this isn't being arrogant, man. I, I, it's being real. Not many people are trying to do. There's not many people that who, who can even open their mouth and criticize me when I do fail. Because I'm on trying to do shit, man, that many people aren't trying to do. But I don't look at failure as failure. I look at failure as your first, second, third, fourth, fifth attempt. I look at them as attempts. I don't look at anything as failure. Because when you're willing to try to do something, not trying is failure. That's, that's, and that's not some after school special shit. But when you're able to go out there, there's, there's no failure. It's attempts. Because when you're trying to do something that's bigger than you, whatever you are, whoever you are, if, if, if you're paralyzed, you're trying to walk one step and you didn't, you didn't fail, mother. That was your first attempt. If that's your biggest thing, that's how your mindset needs to go into everything. So I don't look at it as failure is a big word like, that gets people down. We give so much power to words. I don't. I take the power right away. I didn't feel sh Hey, come here, brother. Let me talk to you real quick, brother. People don't like that, man, but I'm not going to allow you to go to a place that's going to be hard to get out of. It's going to be hard. If I allow you to gain five more pounds or allow you to take four more days off of school or allow you to keep on procrastinating in your life and I see it and I tell Jennifer behind your back I'm doing you no f justice zero justice so where this world is now you can't say a mother f thing. I do I still do and I always will don't like me don't like me I'm good with that where it gets hard and the harder it is the more you start to push back and the more you push back and then it's not right for people to talk about. It's not right for, like, let's say you are fat. I was fat. That's why I talk about it. Go ahead and say something, motherfucker. I was fat too. And it was hard every fucking day to get up. I know what it feels like when you roll your fat ass out of bed and all you want. But I can't want it more than you. And so many people just want it the easy way. It, I'm sorry, man. It's not. So what they start to do is they build this narrative. Of it's okay when the narrative should be you need to work harder you need to discipline your mind better we need to help people more than just saying it's okay it's okay that you're not willing to help yourself out that's not okay it's not okay it's not acceptable even though it's your life if that's if if that's acceptable that's unacceptable and there's a lot of people in this world me included that if I accepted that I wouldn't be anywhere so yeah, it's, a lot of people just, they, they start creating a narrative about themselves that make it okay. The ultimate get out of jail free card. And now the world is set up to have so many get out of jail free cards. Everything is okay. And you can't say a motherfucking thing about it. I want you to, I want you to go there with me. I'm taking you there with me. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I want to take your ass down paradise. Where I, so, the house I lived in in Buffalo, New York, that I got my ass beat every day, funny. We lived on Paradise Road, and it was anything but paradise. So I want you to go there with me. You want to learn from me? Let me take your ass home. Let me take you there. So that's the whole thing about it, man. We're, we're scared to dive into our lives, what made us who we are. The beautiful people that we are, we're all jacked up in so many ways. That's the beauty of us. That's the beauty of me. I'm jacked up, but I figured out my own little process on how to get unjacked up and how to, I'm not gonna get the same, you know, I'm not gonna get the same way you're gonna get there. You may get there by going point A to point B. I might go point C to D to E to F, but I'm gonna be there the same way you are, just a little harder. And that's how I train my brain. So it's just different. I'm just a different, different thinker. My part-time savage is me running like 50 miles a week. What I used to do and what I do now is I got to a point, I'd be running, and I was like, okay, man, we could do 10 miles today. I get, to, I get to 10 miles, but I don't know. That fucking demon that I let out every morning that walks the streets at night, he comes and says, no, bitch, not today, man. There's somebody out there that you don't know, have never met in your entire life, that is doing 12, 13, 14. You're going to do another one. And when you meet them, you ain't getting ready. So, God has kept on running. I'm the hardest working guy that, that doesn't talk about it. So basically, I don't take any days off. 
as far as working out, first thing in the morning time is you have to build your confidence. And every day you're constantly gaining and losing confidence. You're never staying the same. So how you build your confidence is, if you like what you see in that mirror, that's how you start your day off. If you wake up and you, and you look fat, you look out of shape, you're not feel good, which is, you know, or you don't feel good inside. So my whole big thing is get up and work out. Shed some calories. Get the adrenals going. Get the mind going. Get all that going. Every day I run. Every day I work out. A lot of people, what they do is they have these, these finish lines. And I have a saying that says, I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when I'm done. When I was uh, younger, I didn't have any goals. It's not really so much about goals. It's just to do list, a to do list. And as a human being, if you don't have a to do list, you're going to sit back and just fade away. So I've been grinding lately, every day, going over 20 miles a day, getting up early, going to bed early, eating the right. This last week started taking a toll on me. I usually don't think too much, get my shoes on, head out. I've been thinking a lot. That internal voice that's been talking to me, talking about, oh man, you're tired. Looking at my shoes about pushing back the time of that, that I go out to go run. So I decided to tape record myself. That internal voice I put on tape. So if you ever have a hard time out there, tape yourself. Listen to what kind of bitch you're being. Stay hard. You need the ability to grind your ass into a fine powder. And when you're in that fine powder, find a way to build that motherfucker back up repeatedly. And it's possible. I always fix the things on the surface. If I couldn't read and write, I learned to read and write. I would always fix these things on the surface level. And so whenever something hard would like raise his ugly head, I didn't have any kind of tools to handle it. I'm like, man, I thought I fixed this already, man. But no, I didn't go deep into the dungeon of my soul to say, okay, what is making you a quitter? What is making you a weak man? What is making you afraid? That's why I kept on quitting and going back to start or not knowing how to get through hard times. And that's why I always tell people, I'm not a theorist. I didn't study, like, you know, I didn't study a book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You got to beat the shit out of it. And that's what I am. <laughs> Yeah. I, I became that, I, I, I said, okay, we, we can't quit. We gotta figure out what's wrong with you, what's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire and I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. The one mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics. I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do what I do, but still I grind. And that one day, you see me down a dark alley, running at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. Stay hard. And I know how to self-motivate. A lot of my don't know how to self-motivate, man. Like. We like to put the headphones on, like before the big game, and listen to the music. What did you do when the headphones come off, bro? It's you in your own mind. I know how to do that. That's that's the hard part, man. Do you man. ever listen to music when you run? Never. I'm afraid of this. I'm up here. Life made me this way here. I stutter. I, I have these issues with, with uh, reading and writing, and I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. My reading, my learning, my, my workouts, my, my, my diet. You start neglecting all of that. You neglect one of them. You can, you can neglect all of them a long time. It's going to haunt you. When you start seeing that, my God, I haven't eaten right in a long time. I haven't been sleeping right in a long time. It can only be one of those things to take you off. I'm very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my disciplines of life. And when I started to get too far away from them, it's a hard stop. And the one thing, the only thing that gets me mad nowadays is that so many people die with untapped potential because they think that someone else is better than them. 
and they were born not with the greatest tools. You need the ability to grind your ass into a fine powder. And when you're in that fine powder, find a way to build that back up repeatedly. And it's possible. When you come from a small, small town and you come from a place that a lot of people don't want to come out of it and get out of it, and all you want to do is become somebody, you've got to be able to get out and let your mind see open-mindedness. Because a small town, what it does to you is it closes your mind, completely closes your mind. Not everybody, this isn't everybody, a lot of people. You have to be able to go out there and create open-mindedness. You need space. You need space to see the world. Like a lot of racism, a lot of, a lot of ignorance in the world, it comes from people not being out and seeing other things, seeing other people. That's why we judge so harshly, because our minds are so closed to the reality of of life, period. Self-esteem was built at a young age. I had zero. So that's why that discipline for me was important. It takes nothing to be a loser. And that's why I hold most people to a higher standard because I know how little it takes, little, like little ability. Like you need no talent, you need no greatness inside of you, and you can still be a bad mother. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things, because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. That's what I realized. I was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of me. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. I'm the hardest working guy that, that doesn't talk about it. So basically, I don't take any days off as far as working out. First thing in the morning time is you have to build your confidence. And every day you're constantly gaining and losing confidence. You're never staying the same. So how you build your confidence is, if you like what you see in that mirror, that's how you start your day off. If you wake up and you, and you look fat, you look out of shape, you're not feel good, which is, you know, or you don't feel good inside. So my whole big thing is get up and work out. Shed some calories. Get the adrenals going. Get the mind going. Get all that going. Every day I run. Every day I work out. A lot of people, what they do is they have these these finish lines. And I have a saying that says, I don't stop when I'm tired, I stop when I'm done. When I was uh, younger, I didn't have any goals. It's not really so much about goals, it's just a to-do list, a to-do list. And as a human being, if you don't have a to-do list, you're gonna sit back and just fade away. So I've been grinding lately, every day, running over 20 miles a day, getting up early, going to bed early, eating the right this last week started taking a toll on me. I usually don't think too much. Get my shoes on, head out. I've been thinking a lot. That internal voice that's been talking to me, talking about, oh man, you're tired. Looking at my shoes about pushing back the time of that, that I go out to go run. So I decided to tape record myself. That internal voice I put on tape. So if you ever have a hard time out there, tape yourself. Listen to what kind of bitch you're being. Stay hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissect it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. You must right. put it in the fucking freezer and freeze and then you dissect it. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. I want to get out of the freezer. Open the door. And he said, nah. Five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and beating out of myself, mentally and physically. Before I knew it, this is what happened. I am a, even though people may not believe it, because I cuss, which is hilarious, I believe in God big time. I've had this voice in my head since I was a young kid, so what trained me was that voice. This voice in my head guided me to the spot where I'm at today. 
And if you don't believe that you're here for a reason, your life will seriously hurt. And I start looking at my life as God put me, some God, whatever you believe in, put me here to go through this. And now I see all the hundreds of thousands of lives I'm changing by the hell I went through. There's a lot of power in that. So my purpose, as I started going through this journey, instead of looking at like, what was me, God? Man, why, why, man, why, why? I started looking at this, it's the perfect training ground. You knew exactly what you were doing. You put me in every situation possible to tell a story that needed to be told. People don't really understand what that is. When you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like, God, man, I hope this ends. And you see that. Time slows down and you see that. You're, you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, this gotta go. I don't wanna be here anymore. And when I started realizing, I started playing mind games. I, started, and I was like, you know what? I bet these fuckers are looking at us, judging themselves about when they were going through Hell Week. About, let me see, I'm looking at Goggins right now. I was better than him. I was like, okay, okay. You gotta judge me, right? <laughs> All right. So this is what I'm gonna do to you. They tell you how you're supposed to feel. You are feeling that way. I was like, uh, don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel. No, it's day one, motherfucker. This is hour one. So I was getting my Boku all jacked up. I said, we're gonna take these motherfuckers souls. So when they had us doing this simple thing that guys were struggling with, I looked on the instructor's faces and it looked like someone had just fed with their soul. And I looked at my guys in my Boku and I said, hey, guess what? We <laughs> own space in their head. We own space. They're gonna think about us tonight. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that. He's like, oh God, man, I don't wanna go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day long. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up, you have nothing left to give and give more. In life, a lot of us believe that we're working much harder than we actually are. We think if we got up early for four days, we've earned something. You gotta drop your entitled mindset. We believe you work harder than we actually have. Trust me, most of us have it. Learn to help yourself. Don't count on other people to help you. Stay hard. The mind is a medieval mother It's constantly fighting against you. It's the only thing in the history of the world that shows up on time every time. It has a tactical advantage over you. It knows your fears. It knows your insecurities. It knows everything about you. It might be the only thing in that world that knows all about you. You got to know about it. Because the end was near. But there were some asshole instructors that would hear the happiness and go right on past the end point. When that happened, everybody stopped talking. Heads would stop dropping. And I started taking fing soul. At that time, I knew what happened in their mind. They were living off the hope factor. They hoped the instructors would stop running. They hoped the water was never cold. They hoped the weather was good. I don't live off that hope. I wish the water was cold. I wish the instructors keep on running. I wish the f***ing rain. When the ending is unknown and the distance is unknown, that's when you know who the f*** you are. Stay hard. Most of us fail in life because we're afraid of what everyone around you is thinking. That's 100% true. That's the one thing I realized. I walked around and I put these people on a f***ing pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. Always be ready. You never know when your next challenge is coming out of the blue. A lot of people need to have that special event that's down the road that gets them motivated to get ready for the next challenge. I'm telling you right now, every day in life presents the next challenge. Today, I'm minding my best doing pull-ups. Sitting here doing pull-ups. Five, six, seven, eight on the minute. This guy wants to jump in. We get to 30 minutes. He looks at me, thinks we're almost done. We get to an hour. He said to me, how many can you do? I say one more than you. Always be ready in life. Stay hard. I want you, I want you to go there with me. 
I'm taking you there with me. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I want to take your ass down paradise. We, I, so the house I lived in in Buffalo, New York, that I got my ass beat every day, funny. We lived on Paradise Road, and it was anything but paradise. So I want you to go there with me. You want to learn from me? Let me take your ass home. Let me take you there. So that's the whole thing about it, man. We're, we're scared to dive into our lives, what made us who we are. The beautiful people that we are, we're all jacked up in so many ways. That's the beauty of us. That's the beauty of me. I'm jacked up, but I figured out my own little process on how to get unjacked up and how to, I'm not gonna get the same, you know, I'm not gonna get the same way you're gonna get there. You may get there by going point A to point B. I might go point C to D to E to F. I'm gonna be there the same way you are, just a little harder. And that's how I train my brain. So it's just different. I'm just a different, different thinker. One thing I found out in my life, I used to always want people to accept me and like me. So I became who they were. If you like something and I didn't like it, I liked it because you liked it. Become unapologetic of who you are in your life. If you get after it and you're a hard mother get after it. You gotta make yourself better than what you think you are. And what that requires is people not gonna understand you, not know you, not get you at all. Look at you like you're off. Look at you like you have a problem. Don't worry about that. Be unapologetic. Get after it, stay hard. Be who the f you are. Stay hard. What are you doing today, tomorrow, the next day? That's why I'm listening to theorists. I don't listen to all that bull I listen to a mother who's like this, man. What's wrong, man? I'm tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I get a do look in, man. Whatever it is that made me nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt, there's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end. Like, like the 100 mile race I was on, I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end. So today, I decided to try to PR my long run. So the first half of the run, I'm feeling great. My mind is clear, nothing going on. Think about nothing but my, just my running pace, what I'm doing, my breathing, everything like that. So this guy just passed me. He said, God, just be average today. Some of you just don't understand. Some of you have been average for so damn long, you don't know what it is to do hard work. But there's a lot of you out there who want to be much more than average, but just don't know how to do it every single day, the grind. You need to find someone to oil those gears up. So check it out. This is a mindset. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But there's a bunch of people out there who wants what you have, who wants the position you are, who wants the job you have, who wants the wife that you have, or the husband. There's someone out there hungry and wants everything you have. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But if it is, it's gonna be your ass. So make that a motivation for you. Stay hard. Let me tell you something. Those that criticize others, they really got something going on with themselves, which is why they're criticizing you. Quick story. Had some family come in town, eating some breakfast. Goggles is nowhere to be found. I'm out for a little workout, a little run. I come back here for my run. Here come the jokes. Oh, let me guess. You were out running. You probably gotten 100 miles this morning. All the sarcasm, you know how it goes. I annoy people. And they let me know about it. I never say sh to them. But they have no idea how annoying it is to me. Every morning I wake up, I get a chance to see your lazy ass in bed. Stay home.
I love these men, but there's very few of them. There's very few of them. And there's very few that are willing to go there more than once. A lot of people, even people who've gone through special ops, it kicks the sh out of them to a point where in their mind, what got me bad in pair rescue was when I was going through it, I said, I'm only go do this one time. And so many people in special ops, whether they believe it or not, in, in anything, special ops in anything, that's hard. I'm only doing this one time. Once you say that, you fuck yourself. When I was in the military, we go on these instructor led runs. Most of the time we knew the starting end point. So on the way back, I start seeing people getting happy and shit because the end was near. But there were some asshole instructors that would hear the happiness and go right on past the end point. When that happened, everybody stopped talking. Heads would stop dropping. And I start taking souls. At that time, I knew what happened in their minds. They were living off the hope factor. They hoped the instructors would stop running. They hoped the water was never cold. They hoped the weather was good. I don't live off that hope shit. I wish the water was cold. I wish them instructors keep on running. I wish the rain. When the ending is unknown and the distance is unknown, that's when you know who you are. Stay hard. I prioritize trying to win the battle in the morning. Every morning I go for a run. That's the first thing I do every morning. I haven't taken a day off of running since December 2016. So I also stretch out every day for about two to three hours, every day. I've missed two days in about five and a half, six years. And about four days a week, I'm in the gym hitting the weights. Cause you know, you can't just be a runner. So this is every single day, the, the monotony of my life, but this is what builds discipline. You know, and not everybody, I'm not telling everybody to do this, but this is my lifestyle. This is how I build self-discipline. What are the, some of the most valuable things you learned in the Navy? You know what, some of the most valuable things, a lot of people say teamwork and stuff like that. Te teamwork is big, but I learned that you have to be a good individual first. You have to triple down on your weaknesses, because a lot of times, like you always count on your buddy. So there's different leadership styles. One right. You know, I'm having a hard time trying to find a place to run, but I'm spending a lot of time on, you know, the elliptical trainer. I'm making it work. I don't, I don't mind London at all. You know, I've been a lot of places in the world. You know, London's good. You know what, um, for me, most of my life, people didn't know it. I had to tell them the truth. My mom got abused physically, mentally by my dad. And so I kept everything from her pretty much. Whenever I wanted to tell her something, it seemed like bad shit was always happening, not just to her, but to me also. But at a young age, I felt like I was a man of the house. So I didn't want her to know anything about my life. You know, like what I was going through, you know, I had a learned disability. I still have a learned disability. My dad beat the hell out of me. The school wasn't great for me. So everywhere I went, I was having all these kind of obstacles hit me in the face. So I just hit it. So I became a really closed person because I didn't want to stress her out anymore. So I became this person who walked around with like two sides of David Goggins. There's one side that was like, I'm a tough guy. That was the, the outside surface. But on the inside, I was a kid that was just hurting, that needed all kind of help, but no one knew it. And never talked about it because why that show weakness. And my mom didn't need to hear it. At least that's what I thought. So, you know, for, for me to come out and be this vulnerable, because everybody thinks I'm Superman. Everybody thinks I'm Superman. So I had to tell them the truth. And the truth is very important. And for me, a lot of years of my life growing up, I lied a lot because didn't have a lot of friends, felt socially just all kind of awkward. I was hiding all kind of stuff. So you do whatever you can to create another human being that's acceptable that you think is acceptable in society. And when I did that, all that came out was a bunch of shit, a bunch of lies, a bunch of filth, a bunch of nothing. That's who I am. I was lazy, that's who I am. But what I found when I was 297 pounds, so I'm not a guy that read a book and said, oh, they're the answers. All this came from here. 
It came from me putting myself on the hot seat and then saying, okay, wow. Okay, 297, this is where my mind was at. To get to 187, this is where my mind went to, to be, to go through three hell weeks, to run towards in the five miles, to do 4,030 pull-ups. And I'm a natural born fat guy. Even though I was born 175, I gained 125 pounds. I was lazy, that's who I am. I'm a guy that likes to sit back, watch TV and eat pizza. Through the process of time, I realized that I was lying to myself and lying to people. What got me to this point was I was just the opposite of what I am today. I was that guy who ran away from absolutely everything that I got in front of me. But not many people knew that. I had two people. I had the real me was like this very scared, insecure, stuttering, got beat up by his dad, all this kind of stuff. And then I, I built this fake person that walked around like my sh didn't stink, you know? <laughs> you know, right. yeah, so that was, that's kind of how I did it. But what they don't understand is they don't understand the journey that it took me to get to this point. Well, it's a, it's, it's a long process. In my mind, I, I was always afraid. My whole life I was afraid, but I had this voice, this, this conscience that would always be battling me saying, hey, you gotta get up and do something. I didn't want to do sh you know, I was just afraid, but I would, that, that voice would force me to get up and I decided to make moves.